Let's take a look at the old Ford farming thermometer. Yep, it's definitely cold out there. Welcome back. I am Kurt and I am your family farmer. Today we have frigid temperatures. Arctic blast hits Minnesota and it's below zero today. As you can see the water behind me, frozen solid. So really the only thing that we can do is when the cows come and act like they're thirsty, is we try to be there and we try to turn it on to give them a little bit of water and as soon as they're done, we shut it off. Otherwise you're gonna have a giant ice cube. Well, look at that, we have our first customers today. They see me standing over by the water and they come walking. All right, go get your water. That one's a good listener. Cows are not enjoying the minus temperatures today. Drink it up. Now, there are quite a bit of things that I plan to change around the farm and Number one is to get a heated water. This is just, it's tough when it gets this cold. It's a nightmare. The cows have to be on a schedule. You have to be there when they're thirsty. Not for me. What are you doing? We got some of these young stock really waiting for their water. They saw me come out here and they were on the spot. As I had mentioned, and as you can tell, an Arctic blast has hit Minnesota hard over the last seven to ten days we've had highs for the days not get above five degrees below zero and it's dropped down to close to 20 below at night with 40 below wind chills that comes after last week we had a nice fresh snowfall of probably four to six inches and then the bottom just decided to fall out and it's been terribly cold ever since but the bright side is there is a warming trend over the next week or two these frigidly cold temperatures are tough on everything, whether it's the cattle, the machinery, or even the farmer. Nothing seems to want to work right, nothing's in a good mood, and it creates its own challenges. Our Black Angus, they're a tough breed, but they're only comfortable between about 20 degrees above to about, I think it's 80 degrees above. Anything in between there, they're fine. Anything above or below starts to create a considerable amount of stress on them. I just want to share a little bit of research that I've done over the past few days to try to give you guys a good idea and give you the proper care of livestock when it gets this cold out. After doing some extensive research on Google, I found out the perfect temperature for these Black Angus cattle. And it turns out it's 145 degrees and then flip for three minutes. <laughs> so obviously it's well below the 20 degree above zero temperature. About currently right now it's about five below zero. It creates a lot of stress on the animal. That can vary quite a bit and there are a lot of steps and procedures that can be taken to hopefully keep the cattle healthy all winter long. So I created about an eight step process of what to do in nice cold winter weather or what we have to do up here in the northern plains in the upper Midwest, and here they are. Step one is acclimation. The cattle that are expected to live out the winter months outside should be outside prior to these frigid cold temperatures and vice versa, but it's more importantly, you cannot take a cow that's not used to this kind of weather, that's been in the barn, and throw them outside when it's minus 10, minus 20 degrees. You just can't do that if you want a healthy herd. If you acclimate them properly, that gives them time and they will actually grow a thicker and woolier quote. As long as you keep that coat clean and dry, that's a great first step and perhaps one of the most important steps. But I will say the most important step is the windbreak. You gotta protect these cattle from those brutal winds come winter time. When we were talking 40, 60 below wind chills, those are just unsurvivable without a good solid windbreak. These cattle are smart enough to if they don't have a windbreak, they will seek one out and they will prioritize that over food and water, which obviously is not an ideal situation and will have great impacts on the cow. 
If you ever happen to be in Minnesota, just take a look around. You'll notice that the openings for these cattle huts, barns, whatever, they should be facing the south. That protects them from that north, northwest wind in the wintertime. Step three is bedding. You need to have a clean and especially dry bedding pack for these cattle. A great practice to do is you need to start your bedding pack next to your windbreak. And you need to have it layered. So you want to start with a deep, highly absorbent bedding pack just in case it gets wet. The cows go in and out of the snow, in and out of the freezing rain. You need to start with a great, very absorbent, dry base. And you slowly layer it as it gets every day. You want to add a little bit here, a little bit there. And you will build up a bedding pack. And hopefully, ideally, it's kind of like a composting bedding pack. You will actually create heat from that bedding pack, helping keep the cows warm. Step four, body condition. You gotta keep a good look out on each and every individual cow. Keep an eye out for the ones that are starting to look skinny, a little frail, just not a healthy cow. You wanna have a healthy cow all winter long and they will, most of them, it'll have some impact on them and just naturally it will. You gotta eliminate that as much as possible. Deteriorating over time, you need to get them to a better environment and fast. Step five, feed. You need feed, big time. The difference between 32 degrees above zero and zero degrees is about a 30% increase in the amount of feed your cattle will require. You can also use this feed as a tool if you don't have an actual permanent spot to keep your cattle out of the wind and out of the snow. You use that as a tool and you put it where you want the cattle. You put it in front of your windbreak. Use that to guide them to exactly where you want to be. I hope you guys can see that, but if you look carefully when the cows exhale, they got a nice bit of steam coming out of there. It's cold out here. It's a good cold. This is a, your typical January cold snap. Sometimes in January, usually mid to late January, it's not uncommon to wake up and it's 35, degrees below zero air temperature and easily with a little bit of wind can equal 65 degrees below zero wind chills absolutely brutal step six is water sometimes for whatever reason this can be a step that's easily forgotten but cattle need access to water 24 7 without an adequate source of water cattle tend to and they will eat less therefore deteriorating their body condition much faster if forced the cows will try to eat snow but it just isn't enough for their needs step seven Avoid drifting snow. We got a little bit of drift right here. Not a big deal. It's outside of the cattle pen actually. This year it's been fairly easy due to the lack of snow to keep drift. So far haven't been a very big issue, but in years past they can become very big issues. Obviously large drift, this isn't a large drift, but large drift create an issue of accessibility. They prevent the cow to get to and from food and water sources. And in some cases where if you live in areas of huge snow total amounts, they can actually bury the cattle and it can be extremely hard to get to them and you could, they could be stranded out for days before having any kind of access to food and water. Step eight, foot traction. Look at this right here. It's not perfect, it's very good over here. But once you get up to these frozen clumps of dirt, it can get pretty tricky on a cow. They usually kind of make their little paths through. Maybe you can see that, but this is a, we got a light snow last night, so it might be tough to see, but you need to prevent the buildup of snow and ice as much as possible. This benefits both you and the livestock. If you can, you need to rough up the surfaces and if it's available or if you can find it, not frozen this time of year, it's a good idea to put a little bit of gravel and a little bit of sand down for some added traction. The last thing you wanna do is have a cow hurt its leg outside of your shelter on one of these frigid nights. I actually got way too caught up in making some of this video that the water got a little fuller than I would like. The cow stopped drinking. And you can maybe, maybe it's hard to tell, but actually it's starting to freeze already. So I'm gonna actually take a five gallon pail and try to get some of that water out fast. Better take my gloves off so those don't get wet. It's five degrees below zero and I'm gonna get my fingers wet. Oh. 
there I got a chance to warm up for a little bit. Finger stips still are a little iffy at best and I still can't feel my nose. I think it's still there, yep. So there was a list of some of my steps that are must do's to create a decent environment for these cattle when it's this cold out. If you follow those steps, your cattle have a great chance and they'll do very well throughout the entire winter. In some years you'll have certain hardships over others. Some years you might have massive drifts where that's really a big issue. Some years it might just be constant wind that just wears on you. Every year is a little bit different and you have to adjust accordingly. And it's not just cattle or livestock that are affected tremendously by cold weather. Machinery just does not like to work when it's this brutally cold out. Machinery can cause you some major setbacks throughout the entire winter. Maybe a lot of you haven't tried to start a diesel tractor, a diesel motor when it's this cold out, but they do not like it. You need to take preventative actions to get any of your stuff to work. Not only just start up, but to work while you're using it. You need engine block heaters, you need battery chargers, you need decent battery on hand just in case something that's in a house or a shed, something where it's been warm or it's not out in the elements, or if you need it, you can grab it quick and keep on farming. Maybe some of you southerners also might not realize, but fuel, fuel's a big thing. Your diesel, when it's this cold, can be like gel. You need to have the proper fuel additives and the proper diesel. If you have it, you gotta look up the difference between diesel number one and diesel number two. Winter just creates a whole different ball game of challenges. Obviously you have your challenge in the spring when you're doing planting, things break, stuff happens, you're under the gun, weather's coming, what have you. Summer's the same way, trying to get hay in before the rain comes. Fall, gotta get the harvest in before the rain comes. It's too wet, it's too dry. Winter's the same way, too cold, sometimes it's too warm, sometimes it's too cold, you don't have enough snow cover to cover up some of your hay fields. Sometimes you have too much snow, nothing can move, tractor can't move, your cows have a hard time getting around. It's just a mess, you feel like every day you're spending time blowing snow. Last year, I swear, every three or four days, maybe even less than that, five inches of snow, six inches of snow. Last year, where I live, we set the record for total snow accumulation in a year. It was unbelievable. I feel like you were moving snow every other day, because you were. I love to create a positive attitude. I look at the bright side of things, so. Yeah, winter has its challenges, but it's also slower. You got more time to hang with your family. You have more time for a maybe a project that you've been working on. You don't have to get out in the field. It gives you time. Maybe take a nap if you feel like taking a nap. There's advantages to every season. So I enjoy winter for about seven days. <laughs> After that, I'm ready for spring. Is that thing on? Oh look, our shipment of frosted mini wheats just came in. Oh good, everything's still there and hibernating. I have a question for all you guys and girls. What freezes faster, hot or cold water? Leave your answer in the comments. We just started our journey here on Your Family Farmer and we're gonna continue to have a lot of fun, and a lot of adventure along the way. So check out our previous episodes if you like this one. We've got about 20 of them out there. You keep an eye out for new episodes, maybe every week, maybe every other week. More in the spring, more in the summer, more in the fall, but less in the winter. Until then, you guys, keep on farming, and we'll see you later.